backlashes, tangles, lost fish, casting on the bank, casting up trees, losing loads of lures. That's been the start I've had with a bait caster, but was it worth it? Keep watching to find out. So, why did I buy a bait caster when I've got some perfectly good spinning reels? Well, as I'm sure loads of you do, I watch YouTube pretty much non-stop. And I got, kept seeing like the Bass Pro videos, the Bass videos, and they're all there pitching their little lures about with the bait casters and everything. And I'm thinking, I need to do that. I need to be getting myself one of these to have a go with. So I thought, I'm gonna look into it, do some research and see how much it costs, what the advantages are, are they actually a practical solution? And I thought it'd make a nice little video because I know that loads of people are, are actually having a go with these little beauties, uh, low fishing. And uh, I just want to let you know my experience with it. I'm no expert by any means, but I just thought as a, a layman's sort of guide, a layman's, my point of view, as I'm not an expert in low fishing, I'm not an expert with bait casters, but as someone who's just gone out there learn themselves how to use one um, and I thought it'd be a nice little video to share my experiences, things that I did wrong, things that I did right. Hopefully it'll help you if you do fancy a bit of BFS fishing as the cool kids call it. Teeth on him. Crikey, you not that round your finger, would you? <laughs> no. Firstly, the reel. Now, my friend was selling one. I was looking into loads of different reels um, from Daiwa, Shimano, all fantastic, but they were just simply way out of my price range. And um, because this is it's a bit of a winter hobby, really, for me, um, obviously, match fishing takes over in the spring, summer and autumn. I didn't want to be spending loads of money on um, a bait caster. So I thought, I'll look for cheaper alternatives. The Shimano and Daiwa and stuff like that are fantastic. I think there's Aldebaran, Corrado, and there's like some Gekabiji and Daiwa ones, which I'm sure are absolutely amazing. But they were just way out of my price point for what I wanted to do. Um, and my friend was selling this very cheaply. Um, it's a Surinoya, which I know is a very popular uh, model of reel. So I went with that. Um, I know loads of people in America and stuff like that use them. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give that a go. And I bought it second hand for 30 quid, which I think is uh, just a nice little way to get going with it, to be honest. So I went for that. Um, and I matched it with a, a Corum BFS rod, which I got from Tobber Manor Angling. They were on sale for 29.99, I believe, if I remember rightly, certainly 30 quid. So for 60 quid, I got myself a little setup. Uh, I think I was probably lucky getting the reel for as cheap as I did. Um, and I thought, do you know what, that's for me as a, a part-time guy, that is probably a good, good little setup, that. So that's what I've gone for, Dark Wolf, and then a, a little Corum rod, which is just a nice little setup. Now that's enough about the reel. What are they actually like to use? Well, I've got to say this, the learning curve with a bait caster is so steep that it did my head in. So the first session, I went out of it, down my local canal, I was flicking little lures about. I hadn't quite got my casting technique right, but I was, it was going all right, it was, it was nice. I was uh, catching odd fish, I was casting quite nicely. Brilliant, I thought, this is all right. An odd tangle, an odd chuck onto the path when I'm trying to chuck it down the edge, it's going on the path or up the tree or whatever. But do you know what, I thought, I can, I can, I can cope with that. And then on my second session, the wind was naughty. I'd probably not got my settings quite right and I was chucking all over the place. It wasn't going to the far bank. It was going left, it was going right. It was just, a, I had a nightmare with it. I was getting backlashes like you wouldn't believe, like, oh, it was just hell on earth and it was, I was almost putting this thing on eBay that very evening. Um, but then I thought, 
stick with it, you've got to stick with it. And I've had two sessions since then that have been, when you get it right and you've got this thing balanced properly and you are actually using it as it's meant to be used with the right weight and the right tackle, it's just the best. It's so much more enjoyable than using a normal reel. It's so quick, you've got one-handed operation. You, I, I settled on like a little side roll cast, I suppose it's called, um, that works really nicely. And when you're catching fish with this and you've got the casting down and you've got your balance set up balanced, there's nothing better. Um, so it was worth going through that pain in the first few sessions because now I feel like I'm getting to grips with it. I'm catching fish now with it. My casting is getting pretty good, I've got to be honest, better than it was with a, a spinning reel. Um, because of the low trajectory of the cast when you roll it out there, it actually goes really nicely. You get a tight line, it's just, it's just the best. Um, but I had to endure a lot of pain and I dare say a lot of people might have given up because <laughs> uh, it is the the tangles, the backlashes around your reel, oh my God, they're horrendous. Obviously I did my research when I first got it and uh, Andrew's Knots videos were very, very helpful. I've mentioned his channel before and I really like his content. So if you are into any sort of lure fishing, he is the man. Um, and he mentioned using thicker line on this 014 braid now I always use 06 braid, which is PEO2. Um, I always use 06 braid on my normal reels, but he suggested that you get a lot of uh, problems with it going behind the spool. So I thought I'm going to stick with his advice, and I started off with 014. And like I say, first session great, second session not so great. It wasn't the braid's fault though; it was my it was my technique, and I think that is probably a good tip for anyone who's just starting out. Get yourself some thicker braid or thicker mono 014, 015, 016, that kind of thing. Um, which would probably be like three or four pound line and try that because when you do get in a tangle which is inevitable trust me um, it'll just come out it'll just it, you can just get it out whereas obviously with this it's um, a very very thin braid it obviously wants to tie itself in knots that being said now I've had a few sessions and I've got comfortable with it and I'm in, and um, I've got my technique down I have switched to 06 and I must admit the casting performance actually fishing as in not being affected by the wind has been improved and i am catching i believe i'm catching more fish as a result so just bear that in mind if you are fishing i think that 014 would be great if you're fishing short range shallow water um when you're just chucking the lure and getting a bite instantly i think or as it, then that 014 would be fine but i think when you're fishing and you're having to actually present the lure nicely as i mean uh, skipping it back towards you and not wanting it to skid or anything like that, then I think the 06 gets you more bites just because presentation is so much better. So yeah, so I've switched to that. And I don't overfill it. I only put 30 or 40 metres of braid on it. Um, and I've just found that that actually fished. And I had my best session uh, the other day with that set up. And it has just been beautiful. So that's one thing to take in, into consideration. Start off with a bit thicker line. Then once you got familiar with the technique, try try some thinner stuff. Now the second thing that actually got my head around was the casting technique itself, because when you're used to a lifetime of fishing with normal spinning type reels, fixed ball reels, front drag reels, what I use, um, switching to this is totally different. I, uh, as a match angler, I love using a, a long drop, so I've always got three or four foot from a rod tip down to my weight, which is a waggler or a feeder, and I sort of pendulum it out and chuck it forward. But if you try to do that with this, you just end up in a world of pain. It just isn't the same. You're relying so much on the load on the rod tip to actually catapult and, and um, cast your lure for you. So having a, any sort of drop actually whips the lure rather than loads the rod. So what I've had to get to terms with is having the, the lure and the weight almost right on the rod tip. I, I just have a tiny drop about two inches and it just loads the rod beautifully. And I, like I say, it's a, like a sideways roll cast that I've sort of found most comfortable for me. And it's sort of a really quick movement, just a whoosh, like that. It's like a, I don't know if you're table tennis fishing, uh, playing table tennis, it's like a little forehand little flick um, is how I'd describe it. And that is how I found best for me. Backhand, I'm, I can do it, but I'm not as comfortable with it. If the situation arises, I can do it. And it's the same when I'm flicking down the tins on the canal or whatever, down the middle, a little forehand. 
the other cast that I found really helpful is like a pitch, like what the bass anglers call a pitch, like a, it's like, an, like a long drop and just you sort of underarm it down the edge or to cover or in a narrow swim. And I found that really nice because when you're used to a normal reel, there's a lot of drag, but when you're using one of these, there isn't. So you can actually pitch it in low like that and it goes underneath the cover. It's, it's a lovely little technique that I've just really got to grips with. You need the right weight and everything to do it, but it, it does work well. Those two techniques, that roll cast and that little pitch for close in work have, have, have been fantastic so far. And they are the two that once you've got to grips with, they're brilliant. Now, one of the biggest things that I've found that helps with my casting is having the correct balance set up. So the rod is does all the work for you, really. So you need the right weight to load the rod to cast the lure. And I know that sounds obvious, but it is really obvious because if you start whipping, like if you were fishing with a normal reel with a rod that was too stiff, you could probably get away with it because you can really whip it and get the lure out there. But with this, you're relying so much on the spring of the rod that if the weight isn't loading the rod, you just don't get any distance and you get backlashes and everything because you start whipping it. And as soon as you start whipping it, I, trust me, you're just getting all, all kinds of trouble. So for this particular rod, it's like I say, it's a Corum, so solid. It claims it's a one to 10 gram. One gram isn't loading this rod. Certainly not with a BFS reel. So. I found that three grams plus the lure is optimum for this setup. Three gram, a three gram little tungsten uh, lead, little gonk in this set in this case, or that could be anything, a crayfish or whatever. That three gram, I've got the brake set on two and a half, and then I've got the spool tension so that the lure just falls pretty freely, to be honest. And I found that that works really well. I've, I've fished all day uh, last Thursday and never had any problems whatsoever. So that's worth bearing in mind it's all about balancing so if i wanted to actually chuck a lighter weight a one gram for example the real i think could do it i just need a different rod that loads with one gram so i have actually ordered a lighter rod that um, will allow me to fish lighter weights because there are times on canal when you don't want three grams um the grand union is ever so shallow and three grams is actually quite a heavy weight um with the weather as it is at the minute with all the wind and that it's actually quite nice but i I, you need the rod to match the weight to help you cast. It's more important with BFS than, than any other fishing that I've ever done. Um, and it's so important to be able to load the rod correct, correctly. I think the, probably the next thing, and the one thing that I never really understood, and I still, I'm, like I say, I am far from an expert, but I have found a little system that works, is balancing the spool tension and the brakes. Now, if you watch any of the bass stuff, some of the top bass guys, they're doing all kinds of different things with airs. Um, so it's all a bit confusing. And the only way you're gonna work it out is to actually go and use it yourself. And it's taken me four or five sessions now to actually get really comfortable with it. And like I say, I found the best for, for me with this setup, like I say, three grams, the velour, that 06 braid, this rod, is beautiful it's really nice setup and i'm really comfortable with it and i found the best spool tension is to have it so as soon as you open your spool with a little button it just goes shh, just dead smooth it doesn't just drop freely and it doesn't hang there it's just nice and smooth down and i've got my brakes on about two and a little bit is a really really nice little setup and i'm really happy with it I've tried putting the brakes on, but it makes you cast veer to the left, because obviously, or to the right if you're going that way, it's over braking, it's pulling your uh, gear to one side. And I've tried it with uh, the spool tension up as well, but you're then limiting your distance. I think it's more important to learn how to feather the, the weight rather than rely on your brakes, to be honest with you. You want it pretty free running, within reason, obviously. Um, and then as you're casting, you're using your, your thumb to slow it down while it's in the air and as it's getting there actually stop it so it, the weight plops in um that'll stop you getting your bird's nests your tangles and your backlashes more i found than the brakes and the spool tension it's all it's more a, a feeling and obviously I, the more you do it the more you get the time in you, you sort of flick in and, and you're thumbing the spool the whole time and i found that that is probably the better way of doing it rather than relying on your brakes so i've got it pretty open i've got my brakes only lightly set and i've got my spool tension pretty free and then i'm relying on my brakes a lot more 
I'm not going to say I don't get any backlashes anymore. You still get an odd one, but it has been drastically reduced. And, and that, I think, is because I've got everything balanced now because of the rod and the reel. Now, the final thing I want to touch on is the drag. Now, this has actually got a really nice drag, but I must admit, I found it quite hard to use and get right because I'm just so used to a front drag reel where I can adjust it on the fly. But I actually find it quite tricky to adjust the drag, especially when I'm playing a fish. Now... I have it set pretty stiff actually, because the last thing you want to do, you want to set the hook when you strike. Um, and I've tried having it pretty loose and you don't feel like you're setting the hook. And then as you hook a fish, it's really difficult to adjust it. That is the one thing that I'm not, I'm struggling a bit with. I'm sure there's probably a, a, an easy way to do it. It's probably with your finger underneath it. Um, but I'm just not, I've just not got to, to grips with the, to the drag so much yet. That's. So if I do find, hook a fish, a, a pike or something that needs a bit of line um, and I feel like it's on critical, I've just been opening the actual casting button. I don't know what, you actually, what the technical name is, it's like the bail I suppose, but I just click that open and I actually uh, control it with my thumb and it, if a fish needs line, I just give it a little bit and then obviously click it back into action. So that's what I found works better for me. It's a little bit quicker. The drag's great, but I it's user error rather than the reel's fault that I'm struggling with the drag, really. So that's one thing I need to get in touch with. So is it worth it? All the hassle of learning how to use it, is it worth it? I'm gonna say yes, yes it is. There's a lot of pain, there's a steep learning curve if you're gonna have a go with one, um, but it's worth it. When you get it right, when you've got your stuff balanced, it's just so much more enjoyable, I think, than a, than a, sp than a normal spinning reel a front drag reel it just is it's nicer to cast with it's one-handed operation so it's really smooth it's quick if you're all your bites are coming on the fire bank of the canal and you know that if you can just keep popping that lure next to the fire bank give it two winds back and then reel in and do it again if, you, if that's the style of fishing you just can't beat this and there's a reason why them bass guys use these all the time there's a lot of pain to get through. It's an expensive. If you don't get one of these style reels, if you are looking for another one, you do need to spend a fair bit of money to get a good one um, to cope with the lighter weights. But if you're into your lure fishing, I think if you're if you if you're into competitive lure fishing, I think I'd probably stick with a normal reel. But if you're just into it for the enjoyment factor, like I am, you're just wanting to do a nice bit of lure fishing in your spare time why not give it a go it is beautiful and I, i've got to be honest since i've had this i've not picked my other rods up i've not picked my my other reels up it's just so much nicer to use um and i must admit i am a convert and i will probably end up buying all sorts of bfs tackle now because i'm really enjoying the process i'm really enjoying the fishing more to the point it's a lovely bit of kit and yeah bfs fishing i'm into it <laughs>